Hey up everyone, how are you all doing? Here's a quick video, a quick video update of what I'm up to at the moment because I've cleared the garage, I'm working on my JDM car, Mitsubishi Chariot. I'm going to do a video on this when I get it running best I possibly can or tip top. I've done a lot of work on it, engine work on it, and uh, doing some electrical stuff. I've just fitted, I just fitted an alternator last night, a new alternator. I'm just going to put the wheel back on and get this sat down, give it a fire up and see if that alternator is kicking out the voltage required. And then I'm going to, I've done like a, I've wired up some re, a relay box because I've got some trouble with this and it's hard to get parts for it. I'll show you the relay box I've got and, and why I've built it. So I'm just setting the car now. This is the, the most comfiest place to be. This car is like nearly 30 years old. It's a 1992 car and it is the most comfiest car I've ever sat in or driven. We used to have one of these, well, similar car to this in Cyprus. If you look, one of my, look down to my earlier videos, the RVR Open Gear, Mitsubishi RVR Open Gear. Well, this is the same interior, but it's a little bit long wheelbase. It's based on a Mitsubishi uh, Pajero chassis, so it's, it's all-time four-wheel drive. Um, they're, they're very, very capable vehicles off-roading. They're a nightmare to work on. It's a nightmare to work on. This is a diesel one, 4D68T engine. And the diesel engine in this, in my opinion, should not be in here. It's, it's built for the 4G63, the same engine that's in the Eclipse and the Evo. Wish I had that in here. Uh, so what I'm doing at the moment, um, basically, fire the car up, let it warm up. It idles at 900 RPM, put it into gear to drive, and it the idle drops and it shakes unless you apply throttle or unless you balance the throttle. So at the moment, I've got uh, I've wired this this switch up to the uh, throttle up which is under the dash that's it it's just a solenoid a vacuum solenoid so when it gets voltage it opens and raises the throttle so I've done that uh, but I don't I don't want to be flicking these switches and things and stuff like that so I want it to actually I, what I want is this to go into gear reverse dry whichever and I don't have to flick any switches the throttles up automatically I don't know why it's doing that at the minute so I thought how can I do this how can I do it the first plan was to remove this console and put in like a motorcycle brake light switch in there so when I pull this gear column back it, it hits the switch and diverts voltage to the throttle up whichever gear I mean. That would be a good idea but it's a lot of work, a lot of, lot of messing around and fabricating to get a switch mounted in there. Plus if I put a switch in there and I hit reverse it's going to throttle up. If I hit neutral drive it's going to do that in all those gears so unfortunately neutral's there. So I can't do that, <clears throat> it needs to be in individual. So my plan was, I started looking around the car and I thought to myself, hang on a minute, when I put this into gear, um, I put it into drive, obviously a light comes up on here. Let me get the key in, it's under my bum. So, at the minute, let's turn that off. The minute we're in park, so if I select Reverse, you see that? Neutral, drive. I can hear some solenoid like um, something like a solenoid crackling. Maybe that's something to do with it. So, yeah, this lights up, which, which obviously says to me that these light bulbs behind here are getting voltage. Each one of those individuals is getting voltage from the gearbox. So, I remove the dash. I remove the dash, remove the clocks, and behind it, I've noticed there was a connector which connects to the clocks. <clears throat> it's got um, park, drive, neutral, etc. And there's individual wiring going to that circuit. So what I've done, I'll show you in a minute because I'm going to take the dash apart. What I've done is, I've, what I've tailed uh, a wire from each one of those, um, just, just four, just from the drive and reverse and low, low gear those wires are now hanging under this dash coiled up and they're labeled what i'm going to do is wire them to a relay box i've made this relay box here it looks a little bit complicated so five pin relay <clears throat> now so the plan is to when i select uh reverse for instance i'm going to turn the ignition off when I select reverse, I am going to get voltage to that reverse wire. That is going to travel down and go to the throttle up. Boom. We've got throttle up in reverse, so I don't have to click anything. Same with drive, low box, and all that. <clears throat> so, that will eliminate a problem. Now, the problem is, 
if I wire all these individual, if I solder all these little, if I terminate all these wires together and I put it into reverse, all this is going to light up. So I'm going to get reverse drive low box and two. I don't want that. I want them to light up individually, not, not all together, sorry. So this relay uh, box I've made here, five pin relay box. It looks complicated, but I'll explain to you how this works. So this wire here goes to the battery. All right, I've got a fuse in there. I'm going to wire that to the battery, ignore that. This is just a ground wire. And this wire here, this will go to the throttle up. So I've wired each of these relays, terminated them together. So all the power goes to them, goes to this one cable wire here, that goes to the throttle up. So these relays, once each individual one has a trigger uh, voltage going to it, each one will open and send voltage down that one wire. So the rest of them are going to stay closed. Okay, so this is going to get wired to the dash. I've got um, drive, reverse, low box. This is going to get wired to the dash, basically. So when the voltage comes down these individually, uh, it will hit whichever corresponding relay it is. That will open, that will close the circuit and send the voltage to the trigger. But it won't send any voltage back, which is going to light up all these lights here. It basically makes it work individually. It's a big thing. I was hoping this was going to be smaller. I should have got a smaller one, actually. But that's going to get mounted under the dash. If you know about relays and things, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so I've made this. I bought it off eBay. I've got some wiring. And I've made this up, sold it all, terminated it. And that's going to get mounted under there because there's lots of room under there. I'm going to do that and see if it works. See if it actually works and I'll get back to you. It does work and I've tested it and the wiring's under there. So I'm going to get this dash apart and fit it all and get this car on the road today. Right, before I put the wheel on, I'm just going to show you um, the wheel at, underneath this car, the condition of it, because it is absolutely incredible. This car is a 1992 car. It's a little bit dirty because it's been on the road. I do want to wash it under here and keep putting some uh, protective paint on and stuff like that. It's got a little bit of road filth on here, but look at it. I said brake, the discs, are, <laughs> the discs are fine, uh, the pads are fine. Um, there's no rust or corrosion anywhere. It's absolutely solid. It's still got the factory seal on there. Under there, look, there's no rust anywhere on this car. All the components are great. This is a little bit scabby on top there. I will clean that up in the summer and paint it. No point doing any rust treatment in the winter uh, or prevention because um, you get moisture from the uh, elements so yeah I'm quite impressed how good this car is even underneath it got a little bit of damage there from someone's jacked it up irresponsibly I will pull that out but underneath the car it is just dry and solid it's so well right Okay, so let's get this wheel on, then we'll fire it up. So I'll show you the engine. It's a little bit dirty. It was spotless in here because when, it, when I uh, did the engine work on it, and get it nice good clean. There's no rust on this bonnet whatsoever. That's my glow plug wiring I've done myself there. I'm going to tidy everything up. I don't like things on show and get these uh, straightened away. It's mostly just temporary because I want to see things work first before I put it away somewhere. Um, so I'll, I'll put a new glow plug solenoid in there, add the old ones mounted on there. I want to get rid of that. Everything can be put back to original, so I've only just like... This is the original wiring from the glow plugs which went to the to the solenoids. Um, what I've done is I could wire this to there. I might do it later just to see if the solenoids come on okay. The, the um, alternator is right down there, brand new alternator I put on it. The old one is here, a 60 amp alternator. That's a 75 amp. I did want to 100. I did, I did want 105 amp alternator, but they cost like 300 pounds, so that one was 120 quid. Uh, think of that on there. Not easy things to work on these. These are absolutely a pig to work on, because like I said before, this this engine um, it just fits in here, and to do any work on the belts stuff like that, 
you basically you got to strip off so much just to get to very little things it's a right pain even doing the, the, the timing chain and timing belt sorry i've done a timing belt on here as well um okay check out the mess so that's just a redundant switch there uh what i'm looking for now is a battery positive and i found one so we've got a battery positive there <coughs> um oh, it's really difficult with one hand so we've got our we're using going to use this earth for the switchboard we've got we've got one lead to earth we've got it set to dc volts and basically, basically i've tapped around to try and find a constant battery going here and there we've got one battery's a bit weak at the moment 11.76 so this is very very difficult indeed to record in this small space yeah so i'm, I'm extending this wire the positive because i want to run it down here somewhere i don't want to have to take the dash out if in case that fuse blows so the earth will stay where it is right so i'm going to run this down here um and get the rest done so i've mounted that in there would you believe it there's some little metal bendy lug things under there look where which are just snug that up <laughs> it's like it's made for it right so i'm going to go with these in order of the control columns so we're going to have um, reverse drive second and low and then it goes from the bottom it goes blue red yellow black so that's going to be reverse wire i've got my reverse wire here labeled r on that and that runs to the wire that goes to the light on there so i'm going to chop this down put a connector on it obviously reverse bullet connectors i'm going to do that with each individual one and then i will label these up which is which so then i'll get my battery positive wire sorted out and this is going to be an isolator switch to the whole thing so the output from this will run to this switch that way if I need to turn it off or something, any reason I can do that. All right. Right, that's all done. I'll tidy up the wiring now, put it all where it needs to be and give it a try, give it a test. And we'll see what happens there. Eh? Right, so I'm in the car, ignition's on. Let's give it a whirl. Okay. So I'm gonna select rev uh, drive. Awesome, look at that, the idle stays where it should be so neutral yeah reverse awesome park now i'll switch this circuit off which i've done which is there so that's cancelling putting it back to normal just prove it works whoa idle drops that's that steering wheel shake so i'll switch it on Spot on that, right, let's take it for a blast. Okay, so, so far so good, the car feels totally different. When, I'm, what I've noticed is when I depress the throttle pedal, like I'm coming to a stop, it obviously doesn't shudder and judder around like it did do. Like, you'd, you'd idle, if you got it in gear and you're at a stop, you'd idle about 600 RPM, so it's quite low. And when you give it some gas, it'd feel like, really sluggish but so far it feels a lot smoother and happier i want to get up to temperature get it right to temperature and uh see how it forms at that okay so i've just pulled over to move the camera of course and we're at temperature now up good operating temperature it's not overheating which is one good thing and the idle is where it needs to be 900 rpm so i'm in park 
I'm going to put it into drive, boom, just like that. Back at 900 RPM. Really happy. Oh, got a car coming quick. Let's get out of here. All right, changes gear. Okay, I'm just coming up to a stop. And let's see where the idle sits. Anything coming. Feels good. Oh, got a car coming. Quick ball getting put down. Couldn't wait there too long. But that was okay. Pulled up at that stop and the idle didn't drop at all. So, so far, so good. So I want to do a full review on this car because I absolutely love this car and it's unexpected really because I didn't expect to get one. But basically in a nutshell, um, this car was supposed to be a donor car for the RVR, Mitsubishi RVR open gear which I purchased, was it a couple of years ago? Really bad, my memory's like a sieve. So the RVR open gear which sadly was so badly rusted it got scrapped and I've nicked a few bits off it. But this car was supposed to be a donor car because it shares very similar or the same body underneath, just that this is a long wheel base. It shares the similarities and I was going to cut out the body on this, the chassis, arch and stuff like that, and weld it into the RVR open gear with it being such a rare car. But this car had been sat in a scrapyard for been sat for 19 years 19 years and a friend of mine I'm just going past there now a friend of mine went to collect it with his recovery truck and I gave him a battery to uh, put on the car so we can get the steering lock off and stuff like that ignition see what happens and it fired up and it drove straight onto the trailer so 19 years for a car has been sat that long to fire up and drive the brakes weren't seized or anything drove straight onto the trailer that is just immaculate, that is just immense, unheard of, so I just couldn't, couldn't chop this car up. And it's rust free, rust free, and it's fun to drive, it's very handy, 4x4, four four. get the dog in the back, and we're just going to enjoy it, that's all we do with it really, enjoying it. But despite how old this car is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way it drives, the suspension is so smooth, it's probably the smoothest car we have ever driven, and this suspension is very old, I mean, everything's all on this car we've got 30 year old brake suspension bearings stuff like that i will do extra work on this and get it up to uh, a new standard but so far this car drives beautiful lovely and smooth all those bumps i'm just gonna find somewhere else to pull over oh this is a narrow road all right, so I'm pulling up on this little narrow road. I usually pull up here when I uh, review the bikes and stuff like that. So I pulled up now, it's still in drive. You can see it's still in drive. Put into neutral. Excellent, that all works, park. Awesome. Yeah, everything works great. So that job paid off, well worth it. I'm gonna get the car home now. I will give it a clean up when it's summer time. We're getting into summer now, by the way, but I'm gonna give it a clean up and I'll do a full review on this car and give you a tour. I'll take you for a drive in it and show you how beautiful it is. Okay, in fact, I'll show you it from outside. So this is the beast. It's idling perfect there. I've got a Ukrainian stick on. Uh, I put, put that sticker over a scratch actually, so it covers it up. But this is the car. It may not look much to most people, but it's it's a lot to me, and I actually cherish it. It's a lovely drive. It's classic. It's unusual. It's four by four, and it actually really feels like the similar to the car we had in Cyprus, which we loved, although it's not as fast as that. But the interior is absolutely immaculate in there. It smells like a museum, of course. In the back there, there's some more seats that come out. I'm not going to show you the back because it's a right mess. Rambo's been in there. He's made a right little doggy messing back there but yeah this is the car all right let's get home let's get him home get sooty home yes we call this car sooty because if you dip that throttle hard all you get out of the back is a big cloud of black soot i do need to reduce the fueling on the boost i think 
to uh, eliminate that problem but the fuel pump is not uh, set up correctly well I'd say the fuel pumps probably got seal issues so we're not really on full power yet but it's enough for me it drives okay it starts okay I'm gonna leave it for now and tackle that later miles per hour 40 miles per hour I'm not it I'm not gassing it I'll tell you one thing about why you should buy one of these uh, if you if you are an attention seeker I am not an attention seeker by the way but if you are an attention seeker don't go for expensive flash cars get one of these bad boys because I believe me you will get a lot of attention in this car a lot of attention plus it sparks conversation you know it's nothing it's nothing smug you don't get people turning their nose up at you because i think you're some kind of posh nitwit but this car gets a lot of attention when we go out and it's uh it's a good to spark conversation tell people all about it tell them about his journey it's 19 year old demise in a scrapyard then we brought it back to life i bring everything back to life okay so i'm almost home i'm gonna put me away get a few chores done and we'll see you in the summer in Sutton. Goodbye.